I've found Bob and Nita's goodie jar. And right next to it is an amazing mid-century modern ceramic piece for only $2. I can't wait to see what this is worth in today's resale market. So let's take a look together. Hello everyone, it's Tiffany with Thrifting Vegas. I shop at thrift stores, estate sales, garage sales and discount stores for items I can resell for profit on online platforms like eBay, Poshmark and OfferUp. It's early on a Monday morning and we are headed back up to Navajo Lake. We are just at the Arizona border here and about a three hour drive for us. Our first stop is going to be at one of my favorite thrift stores. It's the Deseret Industries in Cedar City, Utah. We're getting off the freeway at Cedar City here. The clouds are quite dark and it looks like it might rain, but um, hopefully we won't be caught in a downpour. Coming up on the left here is our favorite landmark, the lighthouse that tells us we're in Cedar City. There's our favorite Mexican restaurant, Cafe Rio on the right hand side and up on the left is Walmart where we stop to get lemons and ice and a few other bits. And uh, I go into Deseret Industries for just a few minutes of thrifting. We're pulling into the parking lot and right ahead of us is Deseret Industries. As you can see, it's a really big thrift store. They have lots of clothes, lots of hard goods, and even a separate outdoor area. We always manage to find something exciting in here. So let's go in and see what we can find. If you watched my channel and my last video, the last time we were up here in Cedar City, Utah at Deseret Industries, you will know that I found an amazing Viking glass bullseye red candle holder. I don't know if there's any chance of it, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed that there may just be another one and we'll have a pair. Okay, let's grab a cart and we'll go inside. Let's go thrifting. I always look forward to coming to this Deseret Industries. It's clean and well organized, always a good selection, and the prices are incredible. Because we're on vacation, heading up the mountain, I don't have my Thrifting Vegas blanket with me. We have a car full. Chris, the kids, and our two full-grown German Shepherd dogs. Here we are in the hard goods section, so let's take a look and see what we can find. I'm always curious to see how thrift stores utilize their end caps. Some of them use them for new arrivals, some for manager and employee picks. And if you watch my channel, you'll remember that at the Huntington Beach Goodwill that's by my parents' house in Southern California, they color code each end cap. Not seeing anything on this one. Let's hop over here. Lots of colored glass vases on the bottom. Most of these look like florist pieces, vases you would receive a floral arrangement in. Up here, we've got some dishes. Nice red and gold blues up here and some floral teacups. Lots of metals and figurines on this one. I'm sure we're going to find something fun here. This is a family sign. Unfortunately, it is quite bent and damaged, so we're going to leave it. Let's see, trinket trays. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I look straight past this. This is a silver plated mid-century modern Dansk candle holder. Absolutely gorgeous. It's in lovely condition, no tarnish at all. 
you can display it as is or put little candles, the tiny taper candles. Here is a lovely duck uh, napkin ring. And I've just noticed a deer shot glass here. This is a Jägermeister shot glass. I've sold these before. They look wonderful in Christmas displays as uh, well as being useful. Down here, lots of resin and ceramics. Oh my gosh, this is a vintage little hummingbird wall plaque. He is so sweet. These are really hard to find. They sell ever so well for me. One of the designs um, that uh, moves really, really quickly. Let's pop these in as well. Make sure we didn't miss anything here. Little vases. Oh, look at this ghost. He has lost his pumpkin. The pumpkin's broken off, but I'm sure somebody could glue something back on there. I hate to think of this fellow going into the trash or the landfill. So let's rescue him. It's a little birthday doll back there. She is damaged as well. Let's see. Down on the bottom, we have some brown and gold items, trays, more candle holders. Let's see, what is this? Not sure what that is, a decorative flower. Some trophies. This is fun. I love Holland, a little collectible tin. It's only a dollar. The colors are absolutely gorgeous. Look at the windmill and the little boy and girl. Here we are in the seasonal section. This top shelf is fall and autumn. Little pilgrim boy and girl there. Pumpkins and leaves. Resin chickens. Round the corner is Christmas. All sorts of snowmen here. These are patio screen savers. Oh, they're magnets that pop onto your screen door so you don't walk through it by mistake. <laughs> I love these signs for Christmas. This one says believe. Beautifully decorated and lovely quality. It's only a dollar, so let's pop that into our cart. What else can we find here? Look at this moose. Oh my goodness. He is a kit. Do it yourself. Little fabric moose decoration. He's absolutely lovely. Looks to be vintage. He's only 75 cents. So we'll take him as well. Back here is a little angel. Really classically designed. She is also only 75 cents. She would be lovely on a wreath, wouldn't she? There's actually another one back here. So we'll take both of those. Put those in the cart too. And I have noticed here a couple of little Lefton kissing angels. These look to be in lovely condition, a dollar each. A lot of times their wings are broken or they've been glued back on but these are in perfect condition so we'll take them as well beautiful for christmas those let's keep going see what else we can find down here some patriotic items this is nice it's a little coaster but you could also use it as a, a wall decor piece the flag and sewing machine Little candle holder there, star. I love this bear. Oh my goodness, I think it's dandy. The brown tag gives it away. Yes, it's a dandy bear. Super little hat. Let's grab her. We are finding all sorts of smalls, aren't we? Here is a gingerbread cookie mold. It's not branded. It's usually brown bag or pampered chef, those. All sorts of wrap and bags here. 
way on the bottom shelf I have found a witch. Look at her. She's absolutely fantastic. Many of you have told me that you collect witches. So I am absolutely going to grab this girl. She doesn't have a price. So hopefully they will give me one at the checkout. More Halloweeny bits here. Paper plates and metal plates. We've got the Valentine's section. What else? Easter is here. A little pumpkinness has migrated into the Easter. <laughs> Some Christmas village figures. Many of you have asked me to pick up Christmas village figures for you, but you don't tell me what size. They come in all sorts of different sizes and uh, I do have quite a few in my inventory as well as some houses. So if you are looking for Christmas village items, please do let me know what scale uh, you are looking for. Oh, we got St. Patrick's Day up here. So many different holidays. This store is ever so well organized. This is Christmas. It looks like part of a set of the 12 days of Christmas. We've got two turtle doves. Let's pop this in the cart and see if somewhere the rest of the 12 are lurking. Swirly wind chime here. Let's see. So much to see, isn't there? Somebody lost his hat there, maybe a band leader or a soldier. We've got uh, wall decor, notepads and stickers. Oh, look at this. A lot of you also collect everything birdie. That's a lovely stamp. You could make your own cards or designs or decoupage decorating a birdhouse. So we will grab that for $1.50 and keep going. Let's see, there's a strawberry little phone stand, bits for school, cards, Halloweeny bits here. Stickers, all sorts, isn't there? I have to show you all the amazing picture frames they have in this store. Shelves and shelves of them. Look at these. All shapes, sizes and styles. Oh, look at this. This reminds me of the little Think Spring plaque I got here and have in my home. It's a little nighttime, almost a cabin-esque uh, piece I'll pick up. And I love this. Life's Greatest Blessings. Three little birds on a vine there. We'll take that as well. Let's keep going. Document frames. This is ginkgo. Is that a real ginkgo biloba leaf? That's interesting. It looks like somebody has pressed real leaves. This is pretty as well. Lots and lots of picture frames. I do believe somebody has pressed leaves and framed them. That's so interesting. Having a flip through to see if anything else catches my eye. Inspirationals, spirituals. I think I had this one <laughs> in college. It's so funny when you see things that are familiar, it takes you back to a time and place, doesn't it? Not seeing anything else here. Here we are in the clear glass section. I am always on the hunt for beautiful antique and vintage pieces of clear glass. They are so timeless and versatile. You can dress them up for any holiday. I'm just going to dig here for my 
black light here it is and shine it over this shelf just on the off chance that there is some uranium glass that will light up green none on this shelf I do like this little pumpkin it's double-sided you can put a votive in the top or a taper in the bottom so we'll grab that and also here is a little dolphin figurine which is lovely let's put the, both of those carefully into our cart and we will have a look see if there is a signature on this candle holder one easy way to check for signatures is to hold the piece up to the light actually also a black light will show you a signature this is a dog bone <laughs> and it looks like it might be Blanco although I have never seen a Blanco dog bowl nevertheless for a dollar fifty we will pop that into our cart on the next shelf is white glass look at this piece this is a mickey mouse trivet gourmet mickey for the kitchen perfect if your kitchen is blue and white look at that it's from uh, disneyland in anaheim california and i've also noticed this gorgeous little doll she's made of buttons and she's a shelf sitter i love her face her eyelashes and her lips just gorgeous we'll take her as well let's see this is party light i believe a little basket i love it unfortunately only about a 10 to 12 dollar piece what else can we find candles that's part of a tea for one set strawberry seed plaque little ruffled dish with grapes it's quite nice all sorts of signs i found bob and nita's goodie jar and right next to it is an amazing mid-century modern ceramic piece for only two dollars i can't wait to see what this is worth in today's resale market so let's take a look together i'm going to pop this carefully in the car to dig in my purse for my phone and uh, i think we'll start off with a google search so i'm going to open a browser and uh, hit the little camera to the right of the search bar which brings up my Google lens I can then take a picture of my item and Google will come up with visual matches of the piece I'm seeing it here on Poshmark for hundred and seventy five dollars look at this they have it as a rare vintage atomic mid-century modern smoking stand tray I would assume let's go into Poshmark and have a look that is the exact piece it is a smoking caddy for boxes of cigarettes and um, an ashtray part and a couple of coaster areas for drinks little house salt and pepper there very chipped I love this little girl but unfortunately she is missing an arm moving into the brown section little souvenir wooden bear from Big Bear Lake some contemporary vases and plaques and what do we have over here she almost has a precious moments feel to her little bell what else do we have here's a vase candle holder is quite chipped look at this doll she's lovely she's made of cinnamon sticks and fabric really fun let's take her Got a piggy bank and some trinket dishes, candle stands, lots of plaques and plates. That's a project piece for somebody's mum. More plaques. Picture frames 
Here's a vase, another project piece, some napkin rings. Oh, look at this doll. She's really fun. Love her bright colors. And this looks like a cross stitch. I'm not really sure what it's supposed to be though. Lots and lots of plaques and signs on the bottom shelf. A contemporary crab wall decor here. He's fun. Let's see. Oh, these sell quite well. Sadly, this guy is missing his pipe. He should have a pipe in his mouth there. This, I believe, is a menorah. Now, if I was at home in Vegas, I would definitely pick this up. Really lovely, bright colored menorah. But uh, heading up the mountain, we don't have that much room in the car. So I'll leave that. It's a bowl here. Little cat. Is that a planter? She is really sweet. It's either a planter or a sponge caddy for the kitchen could be either the blue section here little shell dish black and whites I thought that might be black glass but it was plastic more candle holders oh look at this this is a project piece, lovely drip glaze pottery. It says dips on it. Just checking it over for any chips or cracks. It's in perfect shape. I wonder if there is a chip bowl to go with it. Chips and dips. Let's pop that in the cart and we'll scan the shelves just to make sure I didn't miss that. Let's keep going. They have an entire section of clear glass candle holders here and colored glass as well checking through for glassy baby and fire and light pieces these have a glassy baby look to them but they have a liner in them and they're not quite large enough to be glassy babies they are interesting though i wonder if when you put the candle in and light it those hearts shine through onto the wall. Lots and lots of candles, as you can see. Candlesticks. Some metal pieces down here. Let's see. Racks and sconces. Candle holders. Christmas candle holders. Oh, these are very modern red candle holders. Here we are in the wood plaques and signs. They have so many letters in this aisle. If you need letters, Cedar City Goodwill is the place to come. Some wreaths there, nesting boxes all sorts of canvases and signs <laughs> that's a fun one we've got roosters and bird houses little tulips oh look at this this is an english placemat by lady claire unfortunately it just seems to be a single but these are lovely just to use as a trivet or you can even hang them on the wall more plaques and signs here little rocking horse more letters these were popular at one time but one of those things that uh, became flooded on ebay so many available and when that happens, unfortunately, the selling price gets driven down. So we'll leave that. All sorts of crafty bits here. 
some uh, animals sadly those are quite damaged and cracked we'll leave them wood block signs this is quite a fun bear look at him definitely vintage lots and lots of wall decor some frames here if you're enjoying the video it would mean the world to me if you could give it a thumbs up drop a comment below and subscribe to my channel with the little red button in the bottom right hand corner of your screen small and large plaques and letters Here we are in the clear drinking glasses and I am running my black light over the shelves just to see if anything glows. Anything with uranium, cadmium. I'm also having a look to make sure that no one has popped uh, a candle holder, glassy baby or anything interesting on these shelves. It is entirely possible and I have found some amazing things where they're not supposed to be. We are making our way into what they call their yard area. It is a huge overflow room full of furniture, artwork, sports equipment, outdoor equipment, and around the outside of the room are shelves of more items, vases, and plates and dishes, just a huge assortment of items. I have spotted this gorgeous pottery vase. I love the shape of it. I love the glaze, the purpley colors. It's in lovely shape, no chips or cracks. It's only $2. So let's add this to our treasures. The cart is filling up. <laughs> Hopefully I'll be able to fit it in the car. I'll probably end up with most of this on my lap. More clear glass here. Some lovely candle holders, a trio of them. I love this planter. Look at that. Again, if I was at home, I would absolutely grab this. Uh, but I am running out of room for big pieces. As you can tell, I'm very, very torn. I love that piece. And this piece is interesting too with the giraffes. Lots more down on the bottom. More vases and bowls. This is a lovely Asian stacking box. I think it might be missing a tear. Got a pheasant down here. Oh my gosh, I don't believe. Look what we have found. This is the chip bowl to the little green drip glaze bowl we found inside. Let's pop that down over here and we can reunite them. Chips and dips. I am so excited to have found the set. That's amazing. The candle holder back here. This is a beautiful mid-century piece. I believe it's California pottery, $2.50. Again, <laughs> super sad I don't have a lot of room in the car. I'm going to have to leave it. What else can we find? Lots more florist vases, clear glass. This is a lovely plate, super huge, a project piece. It's a duck in the grass and water. I absolutely love the design of that. Really, really simple, beautiful piece. Lovely mid-century bowl here. Doesn't glow. Candle holders. and dolls. 
in the very corner of this room is the lamp section and I always like to check carefully over here because sometimes there are amazing treasures. Look at this beautiful vintage piece, it's lusterware with gold. Unfortunately, as you can see, there's some paint loss and damage, so we'll leave this on the shelf. A couple of years ago, I actually found two amazing clear fairy lights here. Actually, I believe those are still in my inventory, so I will grab those and put them in an upcoming haul. Lots of pieces of artwork here, all different shapes and sizes, canvases and frames, beautiful lake photograph there. I had to show you these two incredible vintage cases. You can make an amazing display with these if you open them up and create a display of treasures on the inside. Absolutely lovely. I'm sad I don't have room today. Here on my table is everything we found at Deseret Industries in Cedar City, Utah. Bandit is here. <laughs> he has found a tag. Have you found a tag? Of something I believe I got that you will see in the next video. Let's see, B. Can I have a look? Is that your thing? Oh yes, that is. That's the tag of an amazing pair of brass items that I found at the Fantastic Vintage Market. And you'll see that <laughs> in my next video. He's having a great time. I was so thrilled with everything I found at Deseret Industries. I can't wait to show you. Let's jump in here with Mickey Mouse. This is a gourmet Mickey, lovely trivet. It's from Disneyland Resort in Anaheim. I paid $1.50 for it and I am going to ask $18. I love the blue dots and dashes all around and Mickey in relief there. He's got his chef's hat on and he's mixing in a mixing bowl. Perfect if you have a blue and white kitchen. Next, we have a little uh, plethora of bird related items. First is this amazing stamp. I had so many ideas when I saw this. It's a really good size. That's my hand. Uh, maybe four four inches high so you could actually stamp this make a card and then add your own little birds whether they're stickers or you draw them i think that would be absolutely beautiful for the bird lover a dollar fifty i paid i am going to ask twelve dollars next we have this lovely vintage burwood wall hanging it's a hummingbird with some lovely flowers, just beautiful pastel colors here. And it's little, so you could pop it on your wall anywhere in the bathroom, the kitchen, next to the front door. Really lovely little piece, no damage. I believe I paid, I think I paid either 75 cents or a dollar for this. And I am going to ask $14. Next, I brought this guy back. I couldn't believe he hadn't sold. He is a glass bird, mercury glass style. Uh, absolutely lovely. As you can see, he has the gold with the clear. You could pop him on any little shelf. He could part, be part of Christmas or Easter. Tuck him into some greenery. Just a lovely, lovely piece. I'm not even sure what I paid for him, but I am going to ask $12. Next, a lovely little birdhouse wall hanging with three birds. We've got uh, a robin, I think this might be a blue tit and a great tit possibly. Just lovely, life's greatest blessings. I paid $1.50 for it. I am going to ask $14. Back here, 
is a Made in England placemat. It's by Lady Claire, quite a popular brand. I think my um, placemats I use every day are by Lady Claire, a gift from my mum. There is the sticker. Unfortunately, we only found one, but I picked it up because it reminded me of the little post office and store uh, in the village where I grew up in England. Just lovely. You could pop this on the wall, use it as a trivet, or as I like to do, sometimes I use mismatched placemats just to have it around and uh, enjoy. Really lovely piece. I am going to ask $14 for that. Next, we have our amazing witch here. Look at this girl. She is so expressive, complete with a wart on her chin. She's got a pumpkin dress and a polka dot orange cape. Now, I did notice that it appears that the rim, the brim of her witch's hat is missing. But it would be really super easy to pop a... Uh, circle of black felt in there and you would never know she's got the spider on her head another spider on her cape little bow there but my favorite is her face she's so good absolutely love her for Halloween I am going to ask <laughs> $14 on her over here, I keep forgetting to show you, this is our Robinson Ramsbottom uh, Roseville Bowl. It's a seven inch bowl. And when we found it at Goodwill, I couldn't believe that someone had used it as a plant pot. But I cleaned it, I soaked it in vinegar to get all the water stains off. And it was at that point I understood why someone had used it as a plant pot. It's because of this crack right here. Nevertheless, it's a beautiful piece. You could use it uh, for display. If you have, again, a blue and white kitchen, pop it on a top shelf with some uh, fake fruit in it or a plant in it. No one's any the wiser. And it is a stunning, stunning piece that is really quite expensive in perfect condition. Uh, I've seen them go between $30 and $70. For this one, I am going to ask $22. I was so thrilled with the ceramics we found at Deseret. First, this amazing vase. I absolutely love the lines and the shape on this. It's got little, almost like little feet, and then a, a waist in the middle, and really nice detail on the top. It's absolutely gorgeous, glazed inside and out. Look at the colors and the ribbing on it. Beautiful, not really a drip glaze, more of a speckle glaze. But as I say, the colors are fantastic and you can rotate it just to give a bit of variety. It looks different from every angle, uh, depending on what you pair it with uh, in your display. Just lovely. I think I paid $2 for it. The prices are fantastic at Deseret. I'm going to ask $30 on this. Next, we have, I was so excited about this. We found our dip bowl first, didn't we? Just lovely. Very Halloween-y, very um, fall decor. I love the font. Somebody made this. Sam L. I think... Not really sure if that's a year, 2004 possibly. But then we went in the patio area outside, the yard area, and we found the chip bowl. I love this drip that goes down here in relief. It just looks like the glaze and paint has dripped down the pot, made by the same person, Sam L. That says 104. I'm not really sure what that is, but uh, he or she did an amazing job it's lovely to have the set isn't it a chip and dip bowl i think i paid two dollars on the chips and 150 on the dip bowl so three dollars and fifty cents i am going to ask 28 dollars on the set next 
our fabulous little dandy bear. Look at the fabric on her. It's so vintage and amazing. And her blue hat and poncho are almost an iridescent material that match her paws. There's her tag there. Lovely, lovely. I think I pay, I'm not sure what I paid on her, probably a dollar. And uh, I am going to ask $18. Next, we have our little shelf sitting button lady. I have to zoom in and show you this because she is fabulous. Look at that face. Eyelashes and pouty lips. And these are all buttons. I love the way the artist has made her legs and arm buttons match on each side. So much thought, lovely matching fabric here. She is just a lovely, lovely piece. So good. I think I paid a dollar for her and I am going to ask $22. Made in Holland, I love Holland, this tin. Look at this, we've got that gorgeous, gorgeous uh, blue color so popular in Dutch pieces we've got little Dutch girl and boy in their clogs and a windmill here tulips everything Holland on this tin just a super piece for display and I love how pretty our little doll looks sitting on it I asked I, I paid a dollar for the tin <laughs> <laughs> and I am going to ask $12. I was so happy that these two angels were not chipped or damaged so often. Their wings are broken or they've been re-glued. But these two are in lovely condition. I paid a dollar each. The other one has its original Lefton sticker on it. Taiwan product. Absolutely lovely. And they are kissing. So I paid $2 for the pair. I'm going to ask $18 on the pair. We have some Christmas bits here. Look at this lovely set of angels. Twin angels here. They're just the same, both of them. They would look amazing on a mantle, on a wreath, if you're crafty. You could fix a little uh, ribbon on there and hang them on your tree. So many uses. 75 cents a piece on those. I, <laughs> I am going to ask $9 a piece. Would you take a look at Mr. Moose here? He is fantastic. He is a kit. And I just noticed that his little mini stocking can be used to um, house a little gift. Tiny Christmas treasure, it says. You can make the moose, all pieces pre-cut. I believe everything is there. It uh, doesn't look like it's been opened to where something has been removed, just possibly ripped on the top. But um, this would be so fun to create. Definitely vintage. I paid 75 cents and I'm going to ask $12. Keeping on the Christmas theme, we have this Believe sign. I love these. So fun to pop on a nail on the wall. Really, really classy. So nicely made. I paid a dollar on this and I am going to ask $12. If anybody is crafty and they have an idea of how we can salvage this guy, poor little ghost, his pumpkin broke off, but I couldn't bear the thought of him going into the landfill or the trash, so I rescued him for a dollar. And I'm sure, I'm sure somebody can uh, make him better than you by gluing something on there. Paid a dollar. Let's see who can give him new purpose for $12. A couple of pewter pieces here. First is this lovely duck napkin ring. You could add her to any display 
pop her in the middle of your table with some greenery or you never know someone might just have a set of these and want one more i paid a dollar for her i'm going to ask twelve dollars i believe this is a deer i don't think it's an elk it's a deer and it's a shot glass it's the brand is jägermeister as you can see these sell really well for me and they are fun just to display like that i paid a dollar for it I am going to ask $12. Next, we have this piece I totally glossed over. It's an incredible piece by Dansk. It's silver plate. Let me zoom in so you can, oops, you can see the brand here. There we go. It says Dansk Designs on there just a really really mid-century style piece you can either display it as is or you can put uh, candles in there I believe there's room for 12 little teeny tiny mini tapers this I believe is called the crown that's the design name um, I paid what did I pay missing some price stickers either $1.50 or $2 I believe I am going to ask $35 next are glass pieces here first is a little dolphin so lovely he's bursting out of the waves there sweet little face on him I think he was 75 cents I am going to ask $12 I had a feeling that this might glow. As you can see, it has a yellow tint to it. But uh, as we saw with the black light, it didn't glow. It looks like a pumpkin to me, and it would be fantastic with an orange votive in it. Or you can actually flip it over this way and put in uh, a little taper candle as well. I paid a dollar for it. I am going to ask $12. This piece is a little bit of a mystery. To me, it looks like Blanco. Blanco glass. It has the texture on the back as Blanco does. Uh, solid, heavy, dog bone shaped paperweight. Really, really fun. I paid $1.50 for this. I am going to ask $28. I couldn't resist this patriotic piece. Uh, it's a sewing machine, sewing the flag of the United States. Such a Betsy Ross feel. It is, in fact, a coaster, but again, similar to this uh, other coaster of the English food store and post office, you could use it propped up in your display. You could put a hook on it, hang it on the wall, or even set it on a picture frame, uh, picture frame holder. Really lovely piece. The artwork is incredible. Paid 75 cents. I'm going to ask $12. If you watch my channel um, and watch the last trip up to Deseret, I found um, a Think Spring little wooden piece that matches this very very similar i'm wondering if the artist is the same but this is a cabin in the woods with some pine trees and a bright moon beautifully designed absolutely love this i paid a dollar fifty for it i am going to ask at twenty eight dollars I love this little girl. Her arms and legs are cinnamon sticks. She's absolutely amazing. Great expression, lovely hair bow. This arm is a little bit damaged, but I don't think it takes away from her. She has a bow at the back. Pinafore. Just gorgeous. I think I paid... 75 cents or a dollar for her and i am going to ask 12 dollars last but not least 
my pièce de résistance, the find of the day. I couldn't quite believe that it was just sitting there. This is a mid-century modern uh, smoking caddy. You have your little rests here for cigarettes or cigars. The ashes go in here. Your packet of cigarettes in here and your whiskey or drink of choice uh, can sit in their glasses right there. Just a stunning piece. I love the swirly, swirly design. As we know, I paid $2 for it. It's on uh, Etsy for $175. And uh, I am going to value it at $95. And uh, I obviously am open to the best offer I receive. If you see anything you would like to purchase, please do send me an email, thriftingvegas.tiffany at gmail.com. Please include your name, your address, the items you're interested in, and your offer. Please stay tuned. I have lots and lots of footage of our vacation to Navajo Lake. You'll see Chris, my husband, Miley and Jake, my two children and our dogs, Bear and Rio, uh, the German Shepherds. We fished, we metal detected, we boated and we hiked. We cooked our fishy um, catches and uh, the weather was perfect. Do stay tuned. It's lots and lots of fun. I'll see you next time. Bye. There's a beautiful sky as we're headed up the hill and it looks like we missed the rain. The clouds are gorgeous and it looks like the hills are just a bit wet here, the foothills and uh, ever so green. They've had an awful lot of rain this year. Uh, if you watched my last video up at the lake, you'll remember how high the water level was and we are excited to see how much it's dropped down. Last time we didn't even have a parking lot and uh, hopefully this time um, we'll be able to go out on the dock and the water won't be so high. We're about halfway up the mountain now and the clouds are rolling in. We just saw a sign that they're resurfacing the entire mountain road and we can expect to be stopped for a few minutes up ahead. Bear, what are you doing? Oh, we are stopped at some road work here and the dogs are ready to get out and be there. I think Jake is as well, huh babe? I'm sharing with you now our first glimpse of Navajo Lake. You can see it peeking through the trees here and whenever there's an opening we get a better view. The dogs see it, they're anxious, they smell the smells. We can't wait to be there. Somebody is very ready to get out of the car. <laughs> <laughs> there, are you ready to get out? We are finally here. It looks down like the water's gone down a bit, not too much, but it's a beautiful afternoon. We can see fish jumping and the lake is really glassy. Absolutely perfect. We'll see if we have a parking lot in a second or whether the water is still up over it. Let's have a look. Nope. <laughs> no parking lot. Record breaking snowfall, record breaking, breaking melt. We are taking the high road here that runs back above all of the cabins. It's just an alternative access to the general store where we'll need to go in, check in and get our cabin keys. Chris is just going to pull in up here to the left, park the car, go down, say hello to Ed, get our keys and then hopefully we'll be able to drive the car out in front of our cabin so that we can unload. 
We are here at the lake. It's a beautiful evening. Absolutely gorgeous. No wind at all. The water level have, has dropped maybe, I would say, uh, not even two feet. And over here is what usually is the parking lot. It sort of ends right about here. Uh, what they've had to do is move the entire dock and all the boats forward. Uh, it's quite a big job in order <laughs> to bridge the gap that is usually dry right there. But no matter, we've got a teeny tiny little bit of beach. I'm sure the dogs will have fun uh, here and a little bit. And I am anxious to get my fishing pole in the water and see if the fish are biting. Hey, Smiley, she's exhausting. <laughs> so, Chris is making our first dinner here. We've got hamburgers and hot dogs. The dogs are playing, and up here we have a neighbor watching us. Can you see him? Look at the size of this pup. He's absolutely huge. <laughs> Our guess is a Great Dane, a Harlequin Great Dane mix. But if you have any suggestions of what this pup is, leave me a comment. It's about six o'clock in the morning, Vegas time, and Kids are still asleep here. I'm going to take the dogs out. Let's see. There we go. Here's the lake. Oh, it's perfect for fishing. You can see fish jumping all over. Chris has been down to sort out when we can take the boat. Can we take it out? Yep. We're, We're ready? Got it ready. Ed owns this lodge. He's, I don't know if you can see him. He's cleaning down all the boat decks as he does every morning. He is incredible. If you ever want to come to a stunningly well-managed resort that's just perfect in every way it really is. Do visit Navajo Lake Lodge here. As you can see, it's just absolutely stunning scenery. Rio went out earlier and hopped into the lake. She's a wet dog. Bear's not ever so fond of the water. <laughs> but let's see if they want some breakfast. I think mountain air makes you hungry. You gonna eat me? What you got there? He says, I usually get some trout on this. I'll catch you some fish for lunchtime, bud. Good boy. Rio. Come on, Rhi. Come eat your food. Rhi, come on. Good girl. So we are walking out of the general store. We just secured a boat for the day. Absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous here. Just a few clouds. You can rent paddle boards, kayaks, canoes. There's some little motor boats here. Some of them are privately owned and the owners pay to uh, keep their boats here for the season and over here are all the pontoon boats which is what we enjoy taking out with the kids and the dogs it gives us enough room to have everybody there comfortably the dogs have their blanket and they lay down this is the boat we like to take We're going to get situated and go out fishing. And 
we are off. It's just about seven o'clock and Chris and the dogs and I are doing some early morning fishing. We're on the boat. Look at this beautiful sky. This lake is absolutely stunning. If you watch my channel, you've seen it before in every kind of weather. <laughs> Got some clouds this morning, which is perfect for fishing. We're going to our favorite fishing spot, just up here on the left hand side. We've got our poles in the water here. The first thing we're trying is power bait on a number 10 treble hook here. If you are a fisher person, you know that you have to uh, try different things, trial and error. Sometimes they like power bait, worms. Sometimes uh, they bite on lures. You just never know until you try. Daddy caught the first fish of the day. Look at the size of this. It's amazing. Oh, that's a good one. That's going to be at least, what, 11, 12 inches? <laughs> oh, no. What is it, puppies? Is that there? Is that lunch? Lunchtime. <laughs> All right. Okay. Another one, honey? Another one. Bites the dust. There, yeah, what is it? <laughs> That's lunch, Bear. There you go, lunchy. Both dogs have been on high alert when our poles are in the lake and they get so excited when we catch a fish. But now they're a bit worn out and taking a mid morning nap on the boat. Here's Bear passed out and Rio is back here on the bench on her blanket she's having a little dream the paws are going <laughs> there she is and I'm sure both dogs are going to be ready for lunch in just a bit I don't know if you can see but you can probably hear we are in the middle of the lake in a total downpour Look at this, it's absolutely amazing. <laughs> Out of nowhere. Oh, I have to rescue my line. I think it's going under the boat. Well, we caught maximum number of fish today. I think 21 in all so far. The lake has their own cleaning station up here where we can clean our fish. And uh, we're going to start up a fire on the grill and have a fish dinner. Our cabin is up this way, let's see. Really gorgeous, gorgeous day. And Chris is starting up the fire. Let's go see. We just got back in from a day's fishing on the lake and as you can see, we got some amazing trout. Just look at the size there's my hand. That has to be what, babe? What do you think? Oh, I would say that's uh, 14, 15 inches. 14. 14 or 15 inches. And if you watched my channel last time we were up here, you saw me prepare uh, fish in tinfoil. And I had such a good response that I am going to show you again right now. So I've laid out four fish for us on 
pieces of tin foil. I've got some lemon, fresh lemon cut up. We've got some Trader Joe's garlic salt and a little bit of water here. So first thing we're going to do is pop some lemon inside the fish cavities. Just like that. Obviously they've been gutted and cleaned out. And we are doing a fish for the dogs so that one won't get any lemon or seasoning. Oops, they're sliding. We'll give the fish a good grind of seasoning. On both sides, we'll flip them over. And then each one will get just a little splash of water. Bear. And then I'll just show you with one how we wrap them up. I'm going to pop up the corners. And we want to steam them in the heat. So we don't want a really tight wrap. Just a nice loose wrap. And then they're going to go straight on the hot coals. We've got a really hot grill here. We've waited for the flames to go down. Now the briquettes are just super duper hot. We've um, made a little crimp in the dog's fish with no seasoning. And now we're just going to lay them all directly on the coals. Let me put that one around because I had to double up on the foil. It had a leak. These are really big fish, huh, babe? I think these are the biggest yeah, ones we've ever caught. Biggest, yep, for sure. And these will cook for about probably 15 to 20 minutes because they're a bit bigger than normal. And we'll check back with you when they're done. Our fish have come off the grill. We gave them about 17 minutes, I think. So let's have a look, see if they're done. Trout. Oh, yeah. Like most fish, you can tell if you just go down the center and push out. If it comes away, oh, it Ooh. comes away from the bone. Look at that lovely pink meat there. Mm. We've got some <laughs> beans and weans. The dog's food is here, ready for their fish. They get a half a fish each, and we've got some instant mashed potatoes. Mm -hmm. So we have lots of full tummies here and Chris has just built an amazing fire in the fire pit that they have. Doggies are over here relaxing. There! Leo, did you have your fish? Nice and warm. Just got some clouds over the mountains here. A little bit of thunder. Possibly some lightning. It's not cold, what do you say, about 75 degrees? Bit of a breeze. Chris and I have the dogs out in the field and they're going crazy. <laughs> Sumi's in the meadow. So much fun. <laughs> I have my metal detector here and it is showing a coin down here. So let me show you oops what that looks like here. As you can see, it says one cent there. So let's get my pin pointer. I've got my digger at the ready. Rio's having a paddle over here.
Look, it's right on the surface here. What is it? It's a penny right on the surface. <laughs> Hi. I think we'll have to get a year on that once we're back at the cabin. So, <laughs> Rio is helping me with this one. Hi. Hi. <laughs> the metal detector says it's a dime or a penny. Let's see. Oh, I see the edge of it right there. Hold on, let me show you. Can you see that coin? I think it's a dime. Let's see if we can see a year on there. 2005, possibly. Always check the hole just to make sure there's not more than one. I've got another coin here. Right about there. Let's see if we can find it. Lots of little wormies down here. Can't see it. Let's see. Oh, I dug it out already. There it is. It's a penny. Looks like an older one. If you can see the edge there. The older ones um, tend to stay clean. The new nickel pennies tend to tarnish a bit more. What does that say? 1989, that says. So that's an older one there. I've got one down here that's ringing up as a quarter. Let's see, let's grab my digger, right about there I think, oh there it is, I popped it right out. Let's zoom, see if we can find a date on here. Nineteen eighty-nine. Wasn't that what was the last one was too? Not only did I just scrape up and find a penny in the drive here, in the uh, pebbles. But I looked over and found what you call a surface find. It's a little rubber dinosaur skeleton. We're out here on the dock, relaxing on the boat. Jake is preparing his line to throw it in the water and see what he can catch. He has some really good luck right here off the boat. Rio, what you doing? There's he.
We've got a couple of poles in the water here. We keep getting little nibbles on the power bait, but you have to be really patient because trout are easily spooked. Jake is still fishing. Any bites, Jake? Nope. Not yet. Yeah. Oh yeah. Got to be ready, don't you? Got to be ready to set the hook. Do you hear something? Are you helping daddy fish, Verity? Rio has had a long day. I'm not sure if we can pick it up through the camera, but it's a rainbow. We've got some really ominous clouds. Thunder and lightning. And Jake is still fishing. Hello, Wolfie. Oh, you too. You want to be on camera? Say hi. Back behind the cabins at Navajo Lake Lodge is a spring that comes right down the mountain and out here. It goes underneath the bridge and out to the lake. If we keep going, there is a fantastic walk through the woods that our puppies absolutely love. There's all kinds of chipmunks, and birds and squirrels. It really is their favorite thing to do. It's early morning, right about nine o'clock. The lake, as you can see, is gorgeous. Perfect fishing conditions. A trout just jumped right there. Chris has the dogs. In a minute, he's going to let them off the leash and they're just going to go running into the woods. We've had an especially wet season this year, so everything is green and growing. There they go. Zoomies in the woods. As we walk, there are little slopes down to the lake, and our Rio is especially fond of the water. Another little trail here down to the lake. The doggies know exactly where they're going. It's to see Jake. Johnny. <laughs> the doggies have found the lake. Rio just loves the water. Bear is not so keen on it. <laughs> Bear.
Get some zoomies. <laughs> Did you see that? He went like ah. Barrio, come on. Careful. Careful. I get a shake. There <laughs> Are you wet? <laughs> that was a bit deep, Re. <laughs> Let's go puppies. Come on.
If you watch my channel, you'll know that I'm thrilled to be speaking at this year's Boss Reseller Remix. It's October 16th through 19th here in Las Vegas. If you're a reseller at any level, tickets are still available. This will be my third year, so please join us. It's an incredible experience. If you can't make it in person, be sure to grab your virtual ticket. Get $10 off with my code, ThriftLV.